What's up, guys? David one two and two, and it's discussion day. Ah, yes, discussion day. I like to do these in the middle of my list sprints so that I'm not just watch Pojo. And today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh that I think is actually quite underused, tokens. I'll quickly run through the history of tokens and how they're used and give you the quick rundown on what even a token is and why I like them so much and maybe what I think we could do with them in the future. A token in Yu-Gi-Oh is a monster that is generated by a card effect. I say generated instead of summoned because the card itself doesn't actually exist. The monster that is being created, the token, isn't a card. It is a monster but not a card. Sure, you can have token cards that are printed on cardstock, they say token, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card. However, officially speaking, they aren't a card because officially you can use anything from like pennies or dice or whatever to represent a token as long as it's unambiguously able to be in attack and defense position. Most people just like using the token cards because they look neat on the board and if it's something like the Biru or Scapegoat or something like that, you can actually get a token looks like the token being generated so the pictures match. And that's neat. Other interesting things about these Toki boys is uh... <laughs> They also can't be face down in defense position, and they can't be used for XC summons because, again, they are not actual cards, and neither of those two things can happen with fake cards. Makes sense. And therein lies why I kind of like them. There's interesting things about how they work. They are traditionally vanilla monsters, which, you know, means they don't do too much. However, they do have that inherent unable to be flipped face down protection blanket all tokens, which I just think is kind of cool. And the fact that when tokens are generated, they're normally generated in a positive card advantage, so they're easy to make normally. What makes tokens in Yu-Gi-Oh different than, let's say, other games like Magic is we have extra deck summoning mechanics that are allowed to use the tokens, which means we can turn a bunch of these little guys into a big boy as opposed to something like magic where a lot of times, most of the time, the tokens you're creating are for the sake of themselves so that you can run your opponent over with a million squirrels. However, in Yu-Gi-Oh! everything's so free that getting more free things like little tiny monsters can be problematic. At the beginning of the game, we had things like Jam Breeding Machine, which was pretty bad, so no one used that, but we did have Scapegoat. Scapegoat's seen plenty of time on and off the ban list because it might have some summoning restrictions, you might not be able to just use the tokens for everything. However, four monsters at the price of one quick play spell card you can activate during your opponent's end phase to circumvent the summoning restrictions. That is actually a pretty solid card, regardless of era. Granted, when the card came out, it's mostly being used a chump block. Not exactly, you know, doing much with that extra card advantage. Aside from the occasional metamorphoses into your Thousand Eyes Restrict. But yeah, no, we weren't doing too much with them. Despite the fact that, you know, there was an entire format famously named after the card. But things like our extra deck mechanics at the time, which would have been fusion, doesn't really use them too much. Again, metamorphoses doesn't actually count. It's not a fusion summon. <laughs> But then we go on to the era of synchros, where all we care about is adding up levels to make them white cards. So now we can actually start using those tokens for something other than just a body on board. Well, I guess it's still being used as a body on board, but there's a greater objective. Things like Mecha Fan Beast and Black Wings are notorious for using tokens in their synchro strategies. To the point where uh, a couple of those cards have seen time on the Forbidden Limited list. <laughs> and for a long time, that's how tokens were stuck. We got the next summoning mechanic in Xyz, and like I said before, you cannot use those for XC summoning because they are not true real cards, so they can't be stuck under an XC material as overlay units. Next up we had pendulums, which that doesn't even make any sense. You can't pendulum summon a card from your hand that's not an actual card in your hand, so I, I that is what it is. And then we finally managed to get our pointy boys, the Link Monsters. And that is really when I think tokens came into their own. Link monsters are just extremely generic and free. They're like, two monsters, and that's it. Super, super generic. They do have a restriction. It's like, buy attribute, or... Link monsters are generally very generic. Therefore, something like Scapegoat ends up becoming really powerful because even if that Link monster you're trying to make is made of effect monsters, you have enough level one Link one monsters to turn your level one normal monsters into Link one effect monsters. So then you can therefore go into like a Link four. We have a varied enough Link pool where we can turn four free bodies into literally anything we want. So now we are caught up to the modern era. We didn't get a new summoning mechanic this time around for the next master rule. 
Uh, so tokens are about in the same place they were. Which brings us to my feelings on the matter. I actually really enjoy token-based strategies. Not for the ability to make those tokens into Link or Synchro monsters, but to use those tokens themselves for the sake of themselves. Something like Chain Beat, I think, is a very interesting deck, even though I think a modern build deck probably wouldn't run it, because of a card called Black Garden. Whenever one of you summons a monster, the other guy gets a uh, 800 attack power rose token. Nowadays, the card's pretty bad because you're just giving your opponent free, like, link material every time you summon a card. But back in the day, the fact that this thing cut everyone's attack in half, except for those rose tokens, combined with the fact that you were probably just overwhelming your opponent with a bunch of <laughs> weak roses, was just something super trolly about that. And I just like the gimmick of these free generated monsters that are, like, taking up a place on the board. It's probably why I play a stupid deck based around Hippo Carnival for exactly the same reason. It just generates an obscene amount of card advantage by special summoning these dumb hippos, despite the fact that you can't actually do with anything with them. You thought Scapegoat had restrictions, <laughs> Hippo Carnival and Super Hippo Carnival, both of which just basically let you summon as many of these stupid things as you want. Also say you can like do nothing with them. They can't be tributed. You can't special summon from your extra deck. You can't do anything with them. But that's fine, because like I said, I enjoy tokens and playing token-based strategies when the sheer objective is just to create tokens. I like that trolley mechanic. And I really wish we had like a deck that was like that in this game. Like I said in other games like Magic, that is a viable strategy. I'm pretty positive I was told goblins do that. <laughs> where the objective was to overwhelm your opponent with a bunch of weak little monsters. Yu-Gi-Oh! sadly doesn't work like that decided because in our battle phase we get to pick what we attack and that makes weak monsters inherently worse and other things. But I think it would be actually kind of cool if we had a deck that was totally based around creating tokens and those tokens created were for the sake of themselves. I just think that would be a fun control style deck to play. So down in the comments below, Tell me about a time in which you used a card like Scapegoat or some other token generator for your strategy. And before every single Sky Striker player says, I played Sky Striker. Now, if you wanted to, go right in. Also, maybe tell me whether or not you think a deck based totally around tokens and the ability to create tokens for the sheer sake of creating tokens would be a neat deck or not. Anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I will see you guys next time. Oh, hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.